really amazing about being here today is I was somebody that used to buy a lot of motivational books. I used to listen to CDs in my car, uh, but at the same time, I had somebody in my life that was a living example of everything these books were about, only I couldn't see it, probably because it was my dad. His name was Frank Stranahan, and he passed away a few months ago at the age of 90. But he's, uh, he's best known as being a champion golfer in the 1940s and 50s. He was the number one amateur in the world for many years straight, uh, won several professional tournaments, but along with having a great golf record, I think he was somebody that was really ahead of his time. For example, he was the first person to come up with the idea of lifting weights to get stronger to hit a golf ball further. Now, this is back in the 1940s. Nobody did that. You know, even football players and baseball players, their coaches told them not to do it. It would make you slow. You'd lose your flexibility. You'd be awkward. My dad went, Psst. he didn't believe it. He lifted, and it made him a much longer hitter. And it's not for like 50 years later that we hear about other golfers starting to lift weights, like Tiger Woods. And I think he got a lot of that innovative spirit from his dad, R.A. Stranahan, my grandfather. He actually redesigned a spark plug, made it better, and created the Champion Spark Plug Company. And I think a lot of people back then would see my dad and say, this guy's got a great life, huh? He's really well off. He's winning golf tournaments left and right. He's in the newspapers, got a great physique, beautiful wife, three boys. Not hard to be optimistic when life's going like that, right? It's a lot harder when things aren't going so well. But a few years later, some bad things did happen. Uh, his oldest son, Frank Jr., was diagnosed with bone cancer. They had to amputate his leg. And even after that, he died at the age of 11. And I was like four years old when this happened. And uh, I have a lot more memories of my older brother, uh, Jimmy, and my mother, Ann. But when I was 14, she died of cancer. And she was only 46 years old. And this really disturbed my brother because they had this really close bond. So I think he got really depressed and he got uh, into a lot of bad habits, like drinking heavily. And a year after my mother dies, we get a call from his college and he's found dead. Took some pills, drank some alcohol. And uh, now this perfect life everybody thought my dad had has just become like one tragedy after another. And it wasn't just that. After he retired from the golf tour, he uh, opened up a business. It was like a big investment firm on Wall Street. And for years, it did great. But the stock market crashed, and he lost a fortune. Now, when this happened, I really didn't, uh, I didn't know all the details because he never talked about it. See, he never liked to talk about anything negative. In fact, just the opposite. During this whole period, the person I see in spite of everything that happened, losing two sons, his wife, virtually all his money, the guy I see is real positive. You know, he's upbeat, he's enthusiastic, and I think that was kind of weird, because <laughs> I'm a little more gloomy back then. I'm like more of a depressing type of guy, because I'm always thinking, well, what's going to happen now? You know, and I always had this idea that nothing would really work out, which is probably why, no matter what I did, even if I had some success, if I had the slightest failure, if I had the slightest setback, I'd get really discouraged, and I'd think about giving up. My dad couldn't understand that, because he wasn't like that. See, he never gave up on anything in his entire life. He never quit at anything, no matter what. And later on, I'd read those motivational books, and that's always a big theme, right? You never give up, you're persistent. They always have these famous people that never gave up. Thomas Edison and failed like 2.3 million times. And then he invents the light bulb, and this guy failed like a zillion times. And here I got a guy that's the living definition of persistence. It's not rubbing off on me, though, you know. And I think a reason that he never gave up on anything is this was somebody that once he set a goal, forget it. That was it. He gave it 100% commitment in everything. Golf, business, weights, jogging. 
I mean, this is a guy that took up jogging when he's 50 years old, and immediately that wasn't good enough. He had to run a marathon. And a couple months later, he does it. And he goes on to run 100 marathons. And here's someone who just had such incredible discipline that he, he worked out for years, was always in great shape. But when he's 70 years old, he's in such muscular, like, ripped condition. I was kidding with him one day. I said, why don't you go on one of those muscle shows? You know, they got this Mr. America over 70. He goes, all right. And he, and he wins. <laughs> and I'm like, but I, what I saw is that when a person like him has these goals that they're really passionate about, and they're pursuing them on a daily basis, I think no matter if you've had these tragedies, this can really keep you going. Gives you like a sense of purpose. And he's someone that never allowed himself to think negative. Ever. I asked him once, I said, doesn't this bother you? I mean, don't you ever think, how did all this horrible stuff keep happening? And he looks at me like I'm nuts, you know? He says, Lance, I wouldn't spend one minute thinking stuff like that. What good would that do? And I was like, all right. <laughs> but what he was saying was he never allowed himself to have these negative thoughts. Well, isn't that the theme of all these books like The Secret and The Power of Positive Thinking? And, you know, I'm reading them going, whoa, yeah. And here I got a guy in my life that's, you know, the living example. I'm like, hello, here he is. Here's your role model. Wake up. And I'm like oblivious. So by the time he's about 78 years old, he's in fantastic health, never been sick a day in his life, was into all the natural foods, juicing, and he gets in a car accident. And uh, it didn't seem real serious at the time, but years later, he had a damaged leg from it. He got blood clots. And they went to his, like, his lungs. And a lot of doctors think that this affected him neurologically because he started losing his memory. And he started uh, forgetting how to you know, put his shirt on right and all this stuff. And I was watching this, and I, I was like, how terrible for someone who spent their whole life always just committed to being healthy and doing all this to end up where I had to get a caregiver to look after him 24 hours a day. And he knew what was going on. He was, could communicate, but he, he couldn't do anything about it. But even that didn't stop him. He still had the same attitude still extremely positive, upbeat, and you could see it in everything he did. I would take him to the gym, because I wanted him to keep working out. He'd done it his whole life. And he would get the biggest smile while he's working out, and he would train so hard. Other members in the gym would get inspired. They'd see this 85-year-old guy really pushing it, and they'd come over and they'd go, come on, Frank, do one more, come on! And he'd be, and he'd push that weight. And I would take him to the driving range, because I didn't want him to you know, give that up. And here's a guy that if he can barely shave himself, but you put a golf club in his hand, and all of a sudden, he remembered how to hit that ball perfect. And people would say, hey, Frank, you still got it, and he'd love the attention. And I'm watching this, and I'm seeing this, and back then I'm probably like 45 years old, and I'm, I'm like, wait a minute. You know, if he can be like that after everything that's happened, What's my excuse? And that's when I finally see it. That's when it hits me that this has been here all along. And that's when I said, man, I, I got to make some changes. And all I have to do is be more like that. So all the goals that I had been pursuing, all the stuff I was doing that maybe I did OK, you know, I had some success, but I never really took it all the way. I never really hit my potential. So I said, that's it, you know? I'm gonna give it 100% commitment. And any little obstacle or setback or any of the stuff that happens, this time I wouldn't think of getting discouraged or giving up or quitting, because he wouldn't. And when the negative thoughts start to come into my head like they always did, get out, I'm done. And I start doing this stuff. And pretty soon, that's when I start seeing some progress. That's when everything starts getting better. Everything I was pursuing, my creative goals, business, trading, fitness, everything starts getting better, all because I changed the way I thought. And I think it's the same way when people have had terrible experiences. 
and they're wondering, can I ever get back on track? Can I ever be happy again? And then they hear stories like we're hearing today. And they read books with real people that overcome all these obstacles. And they say, wait a minute, they did it. Why can't I? And that's what I think this is all about. Thank you. Asking what would I do this year if I had no fear? I invite you to ask yourself that question. Even as a kid, I thought, oh, I would love to be in the Peace Corps. I would love to do something good with my life. But you know what happens. You grow up and you think, oh, wait, I forgot to be in the Peace Corps. I forgot to become a fireman. I forgot to go to the moon. But now you're busy doing all these other things and you have credit cards. What would you do if you knew that you could not fail? If you believed, would the wind always fill up your sail? What if we're all meant to do what we secretly dream? 